Hi, my name is Karen Boniker, and I'd like to introduce you to a new brush pack for Painter Essentials called Pastel Essentials. So one of the best ways to learn about using these brushes is to um, perhaps get a feel for how I would use them in a landscape painting. Now, pastels are just so versatile in terms of using them for not only landscape, but but uh, portrait work and still life. So there's a vast amount of different subject matter that you can use these brushes for, uh, but it's important that you recognize that they build up to beautiful texture and have a lovely overlay of colors. As you can see here, um, they're also very um, unique in the terms that they pick up beautiful paper texture that's imparted onto the canvas. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm opening up a new canvas here. And with our new canvas open, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to start with the very first brush here called the Blocky Pastel. Now I've laid out a few colors on my mixer pad here because I enjoy mixing colors, but I like to stay very um, organized and uh, structured in terms of the color palette that I'm using. So many times I'll just put some colors here that help me to stay focused on those colors I'm using. So using my Alt key, I'm going to select this uh, blue value here and we're gonna start off with a blocky pastel. And um, on a layer here, I'm just gonna start building this in. Now the paper texture I'm using is the uh, Sandy Paper or sandy pastel pastel paper and you can see that um, it has a lovely grain to it and I'll zoom in a little bit here so you can see this a little bit better and I'll just start off with a few sketchy brush strokes up at the top and um, pressure setting is not real important with this one but um, you can see that that texture is coming out now I'm gonna go ahead and select another color here and I'm gonna start pulling that color into this existing color. As I do that, you'll notice how these colors kind of blend into each other. And I'm just gonna go ahead and drag this right across the mountains here. And then I'll go to even a lighter value and pull in a lighter value here. So you can see how these colors, this is really uh, very reminiscent of how you would actually work with pastels in layering the textures and the colors. And I'm keeping very, um, as I'm doing this, I'm staying very focused on the brush direction that I'm using. Now I'm gonna move down into this mountains and we'll go ahead and pick another brush. The next brush is called Pan Pastel. And this one I, I really like for uh, creating kind of a soft, foggy effect. If you've ever worked with pan pastel, you'll know that it's a very powdery pastel. And uh, you can see that the, the uh, look of this as you lay it down is very soft and it really is very powdery looking. Uh, but it's highly blendable. Um, with firm pressure, you're gonna get much more of a saturated color, so keep that in mind. And then soft pressure, you get a very soft color coming through. So you wanna be careful of uh, the amount of pressure that you apply to the brush as well. So keep that in mind that that softer pressure is going to give you very uh, translucent color coming through and even as I go up to these edges you'll notice how I with very soft pressure I can kind of blend those edges together. So not only is it a very nice brush for adding color but it's also a nice brush for mingling and uh, applying kind of a blended effect uh, to areas that you're working on as well. Um, the next uh, brush is Pastel Stub and this one is a blending brush so you'll use it when you want to soften edges down um, create some softer edges and you can see that it's just blending those edges and moving those edges around. Um, it's more as if you were working with a real stub uh, in pastels or pencils we use these stub blenders uh, so they're really going to move the color around more than do uh, actual blending so you have to keep that in in mind. Pastel stub. The next brush is pointed pastel 
and I am going to go ahead and use my Alt key again and go back into this blue and I'm going to define the top of this mountain a little bit further here. And you can see how I'm able to use this brush, a very traditional type hard pastel uh, with a very gritty um, effect to it. So you'll want to use it just to create that look of, um, you know, different uh, outlines if you're looking to bring a little bit more detail into certain areas. And nice firm pressure and you get lots of saturation and then soft pressure you know you're going to get a little more gritty appearance to that so remember you can pick up different colors um, let me go pick up some of my other colors here and bring some different colors into the scene now and again I'm using that nice uh, sandy pastel brush paper brush texture for this. Paper texture, I should say. The next brush we're going to take a look at is Senilier. This brush um, is a nice brush for, uh, and let me go ahead and reset it to default settings. So again, it has a nice textured effect to it, as you can see. It overlays color beautifully, and it um, can be used in either small, uh, small size brush tip, or you can use it with a larger brush tip as well. So you can see how very soft pressure you get, again, that very traditional pastel effect where the grain just dissolves into the overlaying brush strokes, which is one of the things I love working with in uh, with pastels. The next brush is the shading pastel. Again, this one, um, let's use a little different color here and maybe go into this middle ground here. I love this one for the texture and uh, this would be a softer pastel in terms of the way that it, uh, you know, the way that you apply and work with it but it does have wonderful texture and it is going to be uh, one of those type of pastels that has more of a firm um, cover effect. So it's not as transparent as some of these uh, uh, pastels that I've showed you previously. So this one, you know, definitely is one that is just going to be more of a cover type pas pastel with lots of saturation in the brush stroke and that's shading the pastel. Uh, variable pastel clouds. Um, this one is very versatile uh, in terms of uh, how you utilize it. You can use it to create these nice little cloud shapes in the sky. I like using it uh, with a small brush tip, you know, maybe show those distant clouds in the background. But the important thing to remember with this one is that stylus pressure is everything with this brush. So when you apply firm pressure, you're going to get lots of saturation in the brush stroke. So you can see as I start to build this cloud in the distance here, uh, I'm putting firm pressure on the stylus. As I change and go into softer pressure, this is where I love working with this one because you, you blend and soften the edges, which is very um, typical of clouds and you can really pull some of the uh, by using your alt key and sampling some of the colors you can start to mold and blend those clouds to create the effect you're after another way to use this would be again if you were looking to uh, create kind of a misty haze over certain parts of your painting uh, maybe over the mountain tops and uh, you can use it that way as well so kind of that hazy look. Um, let's go to the variable pastel and we'll reset that to default. This one is one of my favorites in terms of uh, creating texture. And it is, uh, you can use any of your uh, paper textures. You can work with the grain setting. 
uh, with this brush, but it is one of my favorites in terms of a very feathery, soft pastel brush. I'm going to sample some other colors here and kind of pull in these colors, sample here and go over some of these areas. So you can see that it just is, is lovely for creating a real highly textured um, effect. Be good for um, kind of distant tree areas. So we're building up some trees in the distance. Very soft, and you, I love the way it uh, interacts with the color that's already on the canvas as well. So you can see how you get a beautiful kind of blending going on there, and you can really subdue and subtle uh, create subtle changes in certain parts of the painting. It would be a good brush to uh, show the snow up on top of the mountains because it is so highly textured. And you can use it very small or you can use it very large. Yeah, just a beautiful brush to work with. Wispy Grain is um, another brush where, you know, if you're looking to create maybe wispy clouds up in the sky, soft little variations of color. So kind of a grainy brush. You can use the grain setting to affect how much paper texture is imparted. And so one of my favorites as well. And the last brush I wanted to show you, we're going to go back to the pastel leaves. And this one is a nice brush for uh, creating uh, beautiful uh, fall leaves or trees. And uh, I'm just going to pull in a bunch of different colors here so you can kind of see how this builds. So very feathery, very soft. And using these brushes along with some of the default brushes in um, In painter essentials you can get some beautiful effects so don't limit yourself to one brush category explore the brushes get to know them enjoy working with them and then branch off to some of the other brushes so in this finished image here you can see how I used all the different brushes in the brush categories uh, to go through here Let's go ahead and go back down to our uh, pastels and we'll pick up again the pastel leaves and maybe we want to add some highlights in here. And you can see how that plays in. I used um, for the trunks of the trees here the pointed pastel with the, that um, lovely sandy paper texture and you can see how you can draw and create uh, trunks of trees coming out so it's a good one for that um, I used it in here to create some of the foliage and twigs branches and whatnot. And then for these rocks, um, I wanted to finally uh, finish off with the, again, the blocky pastel. And using this, you can use it with uh, something that has lots of texture in it to where you can, um, you know, impart a bit of texture as you're laying in your rocks. And I pretty much worked with just values of gray here, gray and darker values.
always love to show lots of light in my painting, so I'm always trying to, to bring light in wherever I can. Okay, so that is the Pastel Essentials brush category for Painter Essentials, and I hope you have lots of fun using these brushes. Take care.